Name. Mario. Last name. Mario. First name. Mario. Okay, what's your name? Luigi. Luigi, Luigi? No, Luigi Mario. Okay, look, how many Marios are there between the two of you? There's three. There's, there's Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Mike! Mike! Up these Marios around the side. A. B. N. It's headphones sale! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case it's the 1993 film Super Mario Bros. based off the video game of the same name. So I've been meaning to want to rewatch the film just to see if it's as bad as everyone says. I've been rewatching some of the other films like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and things like that, and I want to say that Double Dragon, I think I watched Double Dragon maybe a year or two ago, so it's up for a rewatch, but... I haven't seen Super Mario Brothers in a long time and my memory of it pretty much matches the reputation of the film that it was not very good. Um, my only real positive memory of the film was I thought that the actors playing Mario and Luigi were good, but the rest of it felt like a weird fever dream so I never really was able to get into saying that the film was anything particularly good. Um, so essentially uh, or as luck would have it, I got I saw an article where someone had put the film up on Internet Archive with the deleted scenes from the film added in or interstitched into the film to make it one seamless experience. So there's certain areas where you can see the um, like in deleted scenes when you have the film timestamp or film code on it um, that shows up. But for the most part, what the person was trying to do was insert interstitch the um, deleted scenes with the VHS copy of the film so the overall look and feel of it pretty much stays consistent as if those deleted scenes were in the film and they did a pretty good job there's a few times when the sound kind of acts weird and the coloring is a little bit off but if you're not really paying too close attention then it the person actually did a pretty good job so that's the uh, starting point for the um, how I got to the watching the film. Now, as far as watching the film, on one hand, I want to say the film was better than I would have expected for the time in that they got a lot of various elements from the video games included in the film, but the overall execution of the film was not very good because you could it feels like they were trying to it was like basically an alpha version of the Street Fighter film where they someone told them hey you need to include this in the film and they did but there was it was made by people who did not really seem to feel understand the theme of the um, game or anything like that so it felt like they were introducing various elements into the film and trying too hard to please everybody in which they ended up really pleasing nobody so um, for example, like starting it off when we start the film, and this feels like it throughout except for the ending, the sound soundtrack felt like a lot of the music when the Jawas are um, working away on their sand crawler from Star Wars. Um, I can't, I'm not really going to try to hum it, or basically if you hear the music, the white uh, music that they, that they play when the Jawas are around, felt like um, that was introduced into Super Mario Brothers with a slight remixed tune. So, um, in general, it didn't feel like, um, I don't know, it just didn't feel like a Super Mario, like they were trying to make a Super Mario Brothers tune, but not the Super Mario Brothers music, I guess, which was weird because at the end of the film, they had a slightly or a mildly orchestral version of the film, of the, um, tune that we have from Super Mario Brothers 1. So they knew what the music was, so it would have been nice to have that music at the end all the way throughout the film as a um, as the theme for, for the movie. And it would have been fine as a orchestral theme. It didn't necessarily have to be an 8-bit tune, but to have music that wasn't didn't really feel like anything related to Super Mario Brothers was weird. 
Um, from there, um, the movie started off pretty good in that we have Mario and Luigi down on their luck and starting their feud with the Scapelli brothers, or the Scapelli plumbing service, and Luigi falls in love with Daisy, which I guess makes sense because Mario falls in love with Peach, but not in this film. He falls in love with some lady, and I don't think I noticed if he called her Peach or anything like that, so that was... That's neither here nor there, but it turns out that Daisy is the key to, um, I guess, King Koopa or Koopa um, taking over the human world, I guess, which was fine. So in order to get into that world, she falls through a secret wall. And in order to get to that secret wall, they fall good. They go through some plumbing. So I thought that was a nice touch because from my memory of Super Mario Brothers 1, I mean, the plumbing and the pipes, of course, is the iconic part of the game overall. So that I do remember. But the game, as far as Super Mario Brothers goes, has secret walls. So if you know that they're or if you don't know that they're there, then it's easy to miss. But if you do know about them, it's a pretty nifty way to find secret levels or go through navigate through the game. And that was translated well enough here, so I actually thought that was a nice touch that they started off um, with the um, uh, so how they as far as how they um, started off the film. Um, next up, we have a line by Mario that where he says, "We're not in Brooklyn anymore." So I actually thought that that was a pretty it was a nice little touch as far as. Um, um, Dor when Dorothy says we're not in Kansas anymore, so um, I don't know. I just thought that stood out as a nice line. I'd, otherwise, that uh, and it was a good way to transition into going from you know the normal human New York level into the secret um, Koopa world. Um, and then we jump right into the silliness and ridiculousness that is the Koopa world, um, as far as. Um, it, most things look the same as the human world, but we have subtle changes like the cars run on electricity, which was an interesting touch because um, we see that dinosaurs, have, the whole idea behind the Koopa world is that dinosaurs are being, or humans were devolved or revolved or whatever um, throughout into this in this world. So in their world, fossil fuels don't exist, so electricity has the chance to um, progress and the technology improved and all of that. So that so basically, um, the Koopa world is running on electricity. So I thought that was an actual nice touch to say that um, because there's no fossil fuels, they have to find some other way to power their cars for movement. And instead of gas, they're gonna use um, electricity. So with that, um, we do. Start off the film as far as, or continue the film as far as some lady named Bertha, which I want to say was one of Koopa's kids in the game. And I don't think she was one of his kids in the uh, movie, but we have his all of his kids making an appearance, and I think only a couple of them were his kids, maybe. But they were all. It felt like they were all more presented as um, people working for Koopa rather than his kids. So I'm not sure how all of that worked, but they introduced the idea of the anti-gravity boost for higher jumps and floating and um, getting to different levels, which was kind of weird because I don't remember that in any of the games. So Mario had um, didn't really have anything special as far as special powers, but Luigi had the special jump. So I think this was the film's way of kind of introducing that, but I would have actually kind of preferred um, where in this case they had where Luigi, I guess, was the only one who had, you know, introduced something along the lines of like they did in the Stargate SG1 TV show where Colonel O'Neill had the gene to um, access the technology of the ancients. So in this case, Luigi has a special dinosaur gene, I guess, in order to access the boost for the special higher jump. And then Mario has a different gene where he can't access the boots, but he can at use the flamethrower gun because it's coded to dinosaur DNA. So something along those lines, because the one thing I did like is that they had the flamethrower or the fireball throwing guns, which is from the game where he can spit fireballs. So throughout the film, I don't, or I don't think, I didn't see Mario or anyone using that gun, so it would have been nice to have him have that power. 
or have that gun in order to throw fireball so that would have been a nice touch there but from at some point they introduced the idea of the um uh, goo or the slime where they and luigi is all in and trusting the slime so it felt like they were um trying to mimic what we see in ghostbusters 2 so i'm actually going to take a quick look to see which one came first um and actually ghostbusters 2 did come out in 1989 so it feels like mario brothers said hey that's a good idea we'll introduce the slime as far as um king bowser or i want to say king bowser or whoever the good king was as the father of daisy but um it didn't if I don't know if this was a subtle attempt at the filmmakers wanting to have the brick instead of having bricks they're going to use the goo being all over the place to move around on because I don't specifically remember a goo world um, in the games so um, I want to say the goo definitely was weird and it was hard to say that it's something I could get behind but it feels like it was a subtle attempt like I said for to have bricks in the game or the color of bricks so I would have preferred instead of the goo have the dinosaurs because they're are tied to the whole fossil fuel thing where they instead of making cement that everything is made out of clay and bricks and all and I guess so something along those lines to have brick worlds instead of cement or something along those lines or make it where clay or, or the cars run better on clay instead of cement or something like that so it's kind of weird and i didn't really like that particular aspect but it also feels like it could have been one of those things where the and, or, and it ties kind of to how the entire koopa world felt a lot like um biff's casino city when marty and doc brown go back in time in the second film so I don't know just the whole theme of it felt kind of weird until they get to the end of the film when um, Mario and Luigi get stuck in the desert planet so that felt more like a name drop than anything else so basically from me uh, up until this point like even the early points of Mario and Luigi getting to getting to the Koopa level all felt good and like the start of a good film but then the rest of it kind of falls apart for me so we do get for example that the name drop of toad in the film but he doesn't do anything toad like so um and nothing with mushrooms or um, power-ups or information or anything like that he's some random musician guy and he gets devolved into a dinosaur so in general it didn't feel like or they didn't have anything as um, good as far as uh, using Toad for anything meaningful. They just use him ha as a um, name drop. So it was one of those things. Um, um, I don't know. Just they didn't really. I guess they didn't because they didn't have a use for Toad. I guess they just wanted to include him just because he's a character in the game. And that goes the same for Yoshi. So Yoshi was in the movie was a, di a, a baby dinosaur with the tongue and the premise of the dinosaur was actually pretty good and I liked it but it didn't do anything much beyond using the tongue to stop the one of the dinosaur people or King Koopa or something like that in the film. I couldn't quite tell you exactly what um, he did well but I just remember that having the tongue stick out and go out and be used for that was actually pretty good so um, one of those things where the idea behind Yoshi or they found a good use for Yoshi but it could have been done a little bit better so they're trying to make Yoshi and Toad be ultra realistic to fit into the film and Yoshi worked better just because Yoshi is was a baby dinosaur in the game anyways so I want to say that I can't really fault um the filmmakers for um, baby Yoshi in the film but it just felt like a general waste it could have been I would have preferred that um, something along the lines where um, you, they have maybe a whole like y Yoshi is kind of the horses of the um, Koopa world where everybody rides uh, Yo or in, in addition to the cars where that um, Yoshi is kind of like the old school way of um, right getting around where um, 
they used to ride Yoshis as um, dinosaurs and then until they figured out electricity and then they made their electric cars and that would have actually made for a good case for um, Toad where Toad maintains um, the stable of Yoshis in order to make sure that there's uh, there's a way that they don't forget how to ride Yoshi or they keep them tamed because they're wild creatures or something like that so in order for um something along those lines where um i don't know that would have been a better like if they had thought that out a little bit better that would have been a better way to um introduce the characters so in the general work of, up of the film um that was not really executed as well as they could have. I want to say it's probably executed about 33% well because of Yoshi's tongue, but that's about it. Otherwise, they kind of just become name drops. Um, otherwise, one of the endearing parts of the film is I did overall like Luigi's and Mario's acting. In general, it was well. Mar Luigi goes all in on everything because he's in love with Daisy. Mario kind of acts as our grounding person because he's like, what's going on? Who? What is all this? I don't understand. And so I liked one of the lines in the film where Luigi says that this all makes sense and he knows how to do this because he plays video games all day, kind of as an in-movie name drop for the video game. Um, otherwise, that's really about, as far as that part goes, that's about it. Um, and then the silliness of it, I guess, to build upon what the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had as far as their Turtles rap, they have a Koopa rap and that song was kind of whack um kind of just probably for the staging i would have preferred a more concert like um experience so um having the street performers was i guess okay to fit in with the theme of the film but i don't know it just felt kind of whack in a rip off of the teenage mutant ninja turtles rap uh, and that was kind of the first thing i thought of so they sh it felt like they should have done it a little bit better um, and then one of the things that was actually very subtle in the film that, um, that I didn't notice the first time around when I mean, they first introduced the um, jumping boots is that um, the um, jumping boots had their own um, special effect sound. So um, it's a little, I can't even mimic that sound, but I actually like that they had a... Um, um, a special effect tied to it so I want to give them props for doing that so things like that like little sound effects actually worked out kind of well um, so I don't know it's one of those things that I actually kind of like so um, that was good and then also when they had the, the synchronized dan dinosaurs dancing in the, to the elevator music and actually and at the end of the film I actually thought that was pretty good because that reminded me of the video game. So that translated well so it would have been nice to kind of see more of that you know go all in on all the video game elements rather than like they it felt like they kind of built too much more of the movie side rather than the video game side or there was no real cohesive element to, to make sense of what was going on um otherwise and then like you know, also in the middle of the film they have like a random wind tunnel i guess for mario and luigi to go to various parts of the building which i guess makes sense because there was a wind level i think there's a wind gliding thing in the game if memory serves but i couldn't remember but i mean sure because like in the video game you have the underwater level and you have to breathe for air so this kind of worked for me so i was actually okay with it because it kind of fits in with the themes of the video game um, and then they had a weird thing where Mario's girlfriend love interest is being held on the 51st floor. So I was wondering if that's kind of a nod to Area 51, or if that's kind of if that's supposed to be a secret room to as a nod to the secret levels in the game, or like a secret room in the game where you can jump around to different levels. Which I guess now thinking about it makes sense with the wind tunnel because in the game you have secret rooms to jump around to different levels. So the wind tunnel was the film's way of jumping to a different level in the building to get to where the, the ladies were being held. So I guess I'll chalk it up to a poorly executed version of that secret room. 
Um, and then at the end of the film, they did have a tunnel entry noise so that so when you're in when you're playing Super Mario Brothers one and you go into a tunnel, they have that uh, weird sound effect, and they only use it once. So I kind of wanted to hear that a little bit more, like in the beginning of the film when they go in, or when they're going into the um, building and they're going to different floors, just as a kind of transition element. So things like that, the, the inconsistencies and things like that kind of stand out. Um, but one of the things that I was able to appreciate this time around versus my memory of the film from before is that when you have Mario fighting with Koopa over the bridge, that's very reminiscent of the final battle in Super Mario Bros. 1. And I'm kind of glad that they didn't have the lava underneath them, but they used a good touch as far as having flames around them to kind of have homage to the flame bolt, flaming bolts that Koopa throws in the game and the lava underneath them. So I actually thought that was pretty good. Um, and they throw him into, I guess, a hole to make him fall down, kind of to mimic him falling into the lava to indicate that Koopa has been defeated. So over, so that was actually something I could appreciate. Um, but the thing that stands out the most is they finally, at the end of the film, have the Mario theme music at the closing of the film as the overview that the movie's done. And I was kind of hoping that they have um, had that throughout the film as an underlying thing, um, maybe even like remix it a little bit to as, throughout the uh, film as that interstitial music rather than the music that they had. That was kind of that Java music at the beginning. So um, I kind of wanted more of that. Like as far as the film goes overall, it while it was very ridiculous, they did have a lot of elements from the game. So to me, it goes back to there was nothing really to tie a lot of it together. So it kind of takes me out of the film because it's like, okay, on one hand, it's just a random film of two plumbers trying to save um one of the plumbers or they're basically their love interest and they're kind of showing how dinosaurs um um evolved and the idea that electric they evolved they evolved their society with electricity instead of uh gas and fossil fuels um the city's kind of um, like Biff Tannen's uh, Casino City for some reason, so kind of like an alternate um, um, society, I guess. Um, so th things like that, in general, the themes and ideas work, but um, it's one of those things where they didn't really think, in think too much um, beyond that, and if they had tied it together a, a lot better, or kind of made the levels uh, work out a lot better than they did, then it kind of would have been a lot better. So for me, kind of like start the story in New York and like like we have this, like for example, make that level one and we have a couple of the dinosaurs showing up and um, we have them going back into the sewer or the you know pipes and tunnels and sewers and then we have Mario and Luigi following them. Um, and they find a secret um, a wall uh, because of because they the dinosaurs kidnap Daisy. They follow her th them through the wall, make the second level you know the the bulk of the movie where they're following everybody around um, and things like that to kind of navigate the world and then introduce the various elements like the wind tunnel to. Um, go to a different level uh, as a secret, or make the make that wind tunnel a secret room to go to another level. Um, introduce uh, Mario, or sorry, introduce Toad and Yoshi as that whole um, way to get around because um, Mario and Luigi don't know about the electricity or cars, so and don't maybe don't even introduce that, um, or um, introduce maybe. The electricity is part of the electric eels because of um, they're not necessarily underwater, but maybe the, there's electric eels in a special fish tank or something like that. And that power, maybe the eels are the electric, uh, are their power source or something along those lines. So I, I basically take the various elements from the video games and use them as the actual basis for the town rather than. 
um, I don't know, it just felt like they were trying to um, match um, regular society and over superimpose um, dinosaurs and Mario tropes, I guess, from the games into that. So that's for me, that's kind of why things like that didn't quite work as much as I think they wanted it to. So for me, if I was to grade the film, I would give it a grade of maybe about a C plus to a B minus. So right about 78 to 82 percent. Um, just because um, overall, I th I mean, I enjoyed the film this time around a lot more than I did before. I, the first time around, I just thought it was overly ridiculous. I wasn't able to really appreciate a lot of the nuances in the uh, movie so they, there's a lot of stuff that they did include very well it's just that um to me they didn't really explain any of that very well and then for example there wasn't like Prin princess peach wasn't there unless that was supposed to be koopa's wife and i guess or and then i guess bowser was for some reason um um daisy's dad i guess so it's one of those things where None of that really made sense and they didn't really, um, so a lot of that really didn't make sense so it um, felt like they could have done things a lot better so um, I don't know just by the time you get to this for example having King Koopa as a king was fine and then Bowser, I, I, to me it would have been better if Bowser, King Bowser uh, was the goop and he was turned into the minions of Koopa and then at the end of the, by the end of the film they have to rescue him to turn him back to his old self and as it turns out then they reveal that mario's girlfriend peach is princess peach and um daisy turns out to be koopa's daughter so that's and he's the king of a rival faction like of a desert world or something like that so kind of go all dune on it so you have various kingdoms fighting for this world and take it from there all these elements kind of fit into place that much better so like i said overall if i was to give the grade of film or the the film a grade i'd give it about a c plus to a b minus it was okay it was entertaining enough there were a lot of elements from the video game but it was not executed as well as it could have been so it kind of falls into the same category as um the street fighter film where you have all the various elements and you have the characters getting into their final um, forms as far as what we see in the video games, which for me overall all of that stuff worked, but they didn't introduce any of the special moves and features of the Street Fighter characters into the films. So you have, for example, I think it was Ken or Ryu at the end doing their move for the Hadouken, Hadouken, but no actual blue fireball. We have Guile doing his uh, uh, flip kick thing, but no special effect there. Um, I guess all of the special effects budget went into um, Bison's shoes to make him fly around, which is probably the only thing that they translated. Um, I don't think they did like Chun-Li's uh, leg kick or spinning kick or E Honda's 100 hand slap or anything like that. So there's they basically take it a lot of the way there, but then they fall really short. So um, it's one of those things where it feels like they could have done a good job, but just um, it feels like it's it's uh, both of those films are up for a remake. Um, so if they did it now, it feels like they could have. Um, done they can do a lot better of a job with a good special effects budget um and for, and then basically do a proper video game to film translation and um we can have a good movie in super mario brothers and in street fighter so um that is all for this particular um review so if you have any questions comments feedback um, any, or comments, your thoughts on the film, maybe something I missed or something to clarify or maybe you like the movie better or you like didn't like the movie as much then you can, like I said, find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is HeadphonesNeal.Reviews for um, past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show and all of that 
good stuff. And of course, the um, if you want to give your feedback and get access to early ac uh, early access to extra content, um, bonus content during the month, and things like that, you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Patel in zero one. But that is all for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.